Today, I'm going to be sharing with you a new data report that we just released a couple of hours ago. It's a report that we call the Heartbeat Report. And we were able to take a look in our data set over the past six months to understand how COVID-19 has impacted our businesses from a data perspective. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. Uh, so I'll jump right in, Alan, uh, and give you some context around what we're going to discuss. So obviously the past couple of months have absolutely transformed our businesses, organizations worldwide. As the pandemic spread, we saw that it was wreaking havoc on many carefully laid plans that organizations had. And in a lot of ways, it affected every employee at every organization worldwide. Uh, one of the things that is consistent, it has all challenged us to do our jobs very differently. Uh, and in that difference, there was also a lot of difficulty that we all felt. Um, but it forced us to really look at how we can work outside of the four walls of a, a an office. And I'm going to share with you some insights about how employees experience that and what their uh, what their overall perceptions were uh, over the past six months. Um, the past couple of months have definitely taught us that to truly make work be able to work for everyone, that we need to be very flexible with how we work and, and our approach that we take. And the data is very much showing that as well. Uh, we took a look at 10 million uh, employee survey responses. And this report that we just released this morning, the Harpy Report, is the insights and the findings that we had from those 10 million employee data points uh, from the period of January to July. We considered individual elements uh, that combine to drive strong employee engagement, which we call key drivers of engagement at PECON. Uh, and I'll talk a little bit about how we understand engagement and what drives engagement. And I'll take you through today what has changed over the past six months. And I think some of the insights will be quite interesting and perhaps quite surprising. So what exactly do we mean by employee engagement? Well, it's increasingly becoming a business metric, which we're extremely excited to see organizations looking at employee engagement as a true business metric. Uh, and, you know, according to William Kahn, back in the early 90s, employees are, are most engaged when they're able to bring their full selves to work. Uh, when employees are able to bring their full selves to work, they're more productive, they're more innovative, they stay more loyal, and they're very committed to their organization. So we want to truly measure employee engagement. We have uh, an index of four engagement questions. We have 14 driver questions, and then we have 27 sub-driver questions for us to be able to understand all of the elements that drive overall engagement, and then also how those drivers correlate with overall engagement. We look at things like professional growth, working environment, and organizational fit are a couple of the 14 drivers of engagement that we look at. So how we measured the impact of COVID-19 on employee engagement. As I mentioned earlier, we took this sample of 10,000, I'm sorry, 10 million employee surveys uh, that were analyzed, and we took the scores from individual employees in January of 2020. And then we looked at the same individuals in July, and we analyzed the questions or the answers to the same questions that they were asked in January to being asked in July. And we were able to look at what the change was over that six month period and particularly what was responsible for that change and that change of in, in engagement. So here are the initial results. Our customers saw an employee engagement increase of 2% during COVID-19, which is pretty amazing and significant. Uh, 
at the time when the pandemic hit, organizations were looked at by their employees because these employees needed support from their organizations. The world was changing at an incredibly fast rate, so much that was uncertain and organizations really needed to provide that support for their employees. And this data is showing that it looks like organizations did a pretty good job here, actually did a great job here because overall employee engagement in this uh, data set that we looked at increased by 2% over that six month period. Employees needed to know that their jobs were safe. They wanted to know not only that their jobs were safe, but that they were safe. And they also needed uh, information on what they should do next. So our findings do suggest that the peak on users that responded uh, positively to this demand, because this increase of 2% is very clear that this is very much associated with the connection that they have to their organization and their work environment. And the other thing that we found is looking at this increase, we looked at it from a regional perspective, and we also looked at it from an industry perspective. Uh, and every continent across the world enjoyed a rise in employee engagement. Specifically in Oceania, uh, Australia, and New Zealand, they actually saw an increase of engagement of 4%, which is quite impressive. Uh, and that is double the global average. And when we looked at industries, financial services and energy and utility sectors saw the biggest increase of engagement up uh, 4% while the other industries saw an increase of 1% to 2%. We're going to talk a bit about financial services because there was a significant increase across many different areas, which I'll, I'll share with you. But the story here, and it's a great story, is that there was definitely an increase of employee engagement over the six month period across the world. So what caused this engagement? Because there's obviously different drivers that caused it. Well, we looked at three main areas and we'll talk today about three main areas. First is we saw a significant increase in employee scores on remote working. We saw it jump by 10%. And organizational psychologists you know, say that companies that give their employees high levels of autonomy over where, when, how they do their work, they really reap the most benefits. And now just a couple of weeks ago, you and I were talking about this concept of autonomy and trust. And now in the data, it's very much coming to fruition around this creating an environment where remote work actually works for employees, empowering with, uh, them with autonomy, the decision on how to do their work, when to do their work, uh, is really creating a greater sense of responsibility with employees, which in turn is creating a higher level of motivation, a higher level of productivity, and ultimately a higher overall level of engagement. We measure uh, employees' sense of autonomy by asking questions like I have the option to work remotely when I'd like to. Uh, and this is scored on the MPS scale of zero to 10. The rise where we saw, uh, or, or the region where we saw the most prominent rise was in Asia. And this had a, a sharp increase of 18% of um, increased satisfaction with the ability to work remote. And again, financial services, as I said, we're going to hear a bit about financial services today, traditionally, which is an office-based sector, as we know, um, and historically has ranked among the worst industries when it comes to autonomy and work-life balance. These employees in financial services and PECON saw uh, a 17% jump in this question between January and July over the option and the ability to work remote. So great story there, uh, and definitely one of the one of the key drivers that uh, drove that two percent increase. So the key for the future around remote work is that we can't remove remote working from the future of work. Now uh, we released an employee expectations report at 
the beginning of 2020, which was looking at data from 2019 and understanding the trends of the data and expectations of employees from the data over the 2019 year from um, you know, organizations around the world, employees answering survey in 160 countries uh, and almost uh, 99 million data points that we were looking at back in 2019. And employees mentioned flexible working um, 18% more uh, in their PECON surveys in 2019 than they did the year before. So there was already this trend that employees were expecting more ability to have flexible working as part of their, uh, their work environment, part of their uh, experience at work. And then here comes the pandemic and the world changes and organizations are forced overnight to create remote working and remote working and flexible working. They're, they're not, they have to work in tandem with each other because yes, we have remote work or people talk about working from home, but in reality, what we're talking about is flexible working. How do we create an environment of a hybrid environment? And most organizations are going towards a hybrid environment. But understanding how do we keep remote working, flexible working, some sort of a ability for the employee to have autonomy in deciding how they work as we build for the future. It's going to be a critical issue for employees going forward. Not every organization is going to completely walk away from their office space, but the idea of reworking office space and creating a blend of homework, remote work, flexible working, working from the office, it is absolutely going to need to be a part of our DNA for the future because it clearly has a direct impact now and I would say for the for the future, it's going to have an impact on overall employee engagement as well. So let's look at the next driver. Uh, and this is around employee uh, working environment. This driver increased by 6% over the six month period. We know from our research that we feel positive when we feel positive about our working environment. It has a positive impact on how we work and how engaged we are. I don't think that's a that's a shock, but the fact that we have data to correlate with it during a very difficult time for employees, that they are happy about their working environment, that this flexible working environment is actually working for them, uh, and that the question, my physical work environment contributes positively to my ability to do my job, we definitely saw a significant increase here of 6%. We go back to those regional looks, uh, environment scores in Oceania, again, in Australia, New Zealand, increased by 8%. Interestingly, in North America, there was not really any improvement between January and July. We have work to do, I think, in North America around creating and creating really beneficial, flexible working environments. But you know what? We have the opportunity ahead of us. There's a whole bunch, there's a whole wide road ahead of us for us to be able to drill, to build out these um, flexible working environments and listening to our employees and, and working with our employees to, to build that out in the most effective way. When we look at the regions, technology employees gave significantly higher scores for work environment up 9%. And again, our friends in the financial services industry and also professional services saw a sizable increase in this driver by 7%. So a little bit higher than the global average. Next, we are going to talk about how we can reimagine the physical workplace. So as I said, not every organization is going to just give up their offices because that's not the solution and that's not going to be the answer for every organization. But when the pandemic hit, obviously many employees were displaced uh, from offices to their homes. Uh, new safety measures were put in place, but we have the opportunity to reimagine uh, what our physical workplace looks like. Most employees absolutely are focused on the appreciation of feeling safe and continuing to feel safe in their work environments. Um, others have found working remotely incredibly frustrating and difficult. So being able to create an environment that works for everybody is really what our, our opportunity, I wouldn't say challenge, our opportunity is for every organization. 
It's a bit of an experiment right now. The outcome of the experiment is different for each company, but one of the consistent commonalities is that hybrid and uh, a hybrid flexible working model is pretty much going to be the future for all of us. Not specifically always abandoning offices, but reworking and reimagining our offices into more community type, more collaborative workspaces, not this every employee having their own desk, but really working on how do we create office space to be more collaborative, maintaining that safety level for our employees. Uh, But we're going to need to reconstruct our physical workplace. And for those organizations that are going to fully remote, many organizations have, they're going to be need to focus or they're going to, need to focus on creating a physical workplace culture in a digital setting. So uh, one thing is absolutely for certain is that physical workplace is changing fast and it definitely has a significant impact on overall employee engagement. Now, mental well-being, this is an area that we are all focused on, and if we're not, we need to be focused on as organizations. Mental well-being has never been more center stage, and that makes me smile every single day when I get up. The idea that organizations are focused on their employees' mental well-being, mental health, and that comes in a lot of different ways, is a very strong sign for the future. The WHO, and many people know this, but if you don't, the WHO put out uh, a couple of years ago a report around uh, estimating depression, anxiety cost, that that affects the global economy uh, roughly a trillion dollars every year. That's significant and in lost productivity. And in May 2020, the WHO advocated uh, that there need to be a substantial investment in global mental health um, crisis, which was caused by the pandemic. Our organizational fit driver measures the degree to which employees feel that the culture and values of their organization match their own personal values uh, and their own personal culture. Uh, We include a specific question on mental health. We ask very specifically, your company really cares about my mental uh, mental well-being. Between January and July, employee scored uh, the employee scores increased in this area by five percent, which is great. That means that organizations are focused and employees are feeling that. But we need to continue that. We need to continue working on this. We need to continue this to be a focus because this absolutely has a specific impact on increasing employee engagement. We know that, and now we can very much tie data just over a six-month period that there was a five percent increase for employees feeling that our empo- that their employers really care about their mental well-being. And again, we're talking about industries, financial services, financial services uh, over the six month period, a lot of positive increases in financial services. Uh, In general, financial services has had one of the highest rates of employee absence due to poor mental health. They saw a 9% rise in their score, uh, or we saw a 9% rise in the financial services score around employees feeling that their companies really care about their mental well-being, which was the largest out of all sectors. So a lot of really positive stories coming out of the financial services sector. Mental well-being is good for business. We know that the past few months have absolutely been a test of the resilience of organizations and their employees, increased risks of isolation, burnout, stress, obviously frustration has been a part of our everyday life long-term ripple effects in this long-term period um, uh, and the effects that it's had on mental health is yet to be seen. But it's very positive to see that over the six-month period, employees globally felt more supported by their organizations. And now the key is for organizations to continue to keep building on this momentum. Whether hybrid, remote, office-based, we have to develop the right framework that supports this goal for the long term and long term is not six months, 12 months, 18 months. It is for the next several years down the road. And now is our opportunity to do it. And now is the opportunity to work with our employees to build out what's going to work best for them, because ultimately we know that it is going to directly impact their experience and ultimately impact their overall level of employee engagement. Growth was the only driver that did not increase uh, over the six month period. And maybe not surprising because many organizations have 
probably reduced budgets, have been focused on business resiliency. They haven't really been focused on cr- focusing on growth, uh, but organizations, we need to get back on track with focusing on individual growth plans, especially with Gen Z. We looked at this from a generational perspective. Gen, Gen Z employees uh, had the largest drop in this question by three and a half percent. So we need to make sure we're focused on our younger generations, individual growth plans and development. Um, And actually Asia was the only area that had a slight increase here of about 1%, but across the world growth uh, was stagnant or decreased. So we wanna make sure that we're focusing on those individual growth plans as we look at 2021, because growth is a significant driver to overall engagement. All right. Organizations have to ensure that work continues to work for people. Not surprising, we need to stay very focused on flexible working, hybrid working models. We need to really double down our focus on mental health, make sure that we're building those right programs for the future. They have a direct impact, correlated impact from the data on overall engagement. Our working environments, we need to figure out how those are going to continue working for our employees and understand that working environments are different for everybody and we kind of have to be everything for everybody right now in a lot of ways, but let's figure that out together with our employees because if we continue to get all of these things right, we should still continue to see an increase of employee engagement. And just a quick note on that, a 2% increase of employee engagement over a six month period is a statistically extremely significant increase. So it's uh, we're very happy to see those numbers. So Al, I am going to hold here. If you'd like to read the report, it's on pecan.com. There's a lot of insights in it, but that is the highlights of our newest Harpy report uh, about the impact of COVID-19. Uh, Patrick, that's fantastic. And I love the work that you do. And I, at the end, you said, uh, all right, Al, read the report. <laughs> I'm like, all right, I'm just going to fire through that right now. Uh, it's, um, it is really, I mean, there's so many questions. There's uh, several questions coming in here. Um, there's some uh, comments and, and chatter on the chat. So, uh, and all positive and, and good. And I'm going to actually synthesize the questions that I see Perfect. before me with one, one that I have in, in mind here is that I was taken a little bit by the uptick in, uh, in New Zealand and Australia in terms of mm. their engagement and North America was flat and related to that, um, their uh, relation to the work environment and there's some variability there. And there's a whole host of underlying dimensions that I imagine you could get into around the fact that some in here in North America, we don't have the social support systems that many other countries mm. do. And uh, many people uh, just are, you know, are living hand to mouth. And so I just yeah. want to know if you have looked into or plan on looking into any of those dynamics, whether it be a social support system, cultural norms mm-hmm. around family support systems, um, you know, with elder parents and so forth. A- any thoughts there? Yeah, I, I think that's a it's a very valid point. And I also think that if you look at how different countries or different regions reacted to the pandemic in different timelines. Uh, and I think that there's elements of that as well. Um, we are constantly looking at the data to see what the, um, uh, what the, uh, influencers could be in these areas. And, you know, one question could be, well, could in could engagement have increased because people were also just happy to have a job right because people were getting laid off and like you're saying in the us many people were uh, also losing their jobs and it that could be an element of it but i think the idea is that if we have the knowledge and we're starting to look into this in our own organizations and also uh understanding what our employees are truly experiencing then that, that at least even brings it down to a more specific level of what's going on in my specific organization and what what do I need to focus on? So we are looking, constantly looking at finding out more ways of looking at the data and understanding what impacts it. Um, But the overall story is, um, and because of the fact that there's so many data points, uh, it's it's a pretty broad data set for us to be able to, um, to 
trust the insights. Um, but it, it's a good question and something we are looking into. Well, I got one more question before we uh, have to wrap. And it's uh, this, because I was uh, kind of jumping out of my skin when Prasad uh, Seti from Google earlier this morning shared that, oh, he spends a lot of time with his facilities and real estate team and with IT. And because I've, I've seen it happening, and so uh, with other organizations where these uh, crisis management teams have been multidisciplinary. And what you just shared are a lot of insights that facilities, IT, HR can all sit at the table with and consume and devise the most appropriate workplace, remote work strategy um, moving forward and iterate as we go. So we're facilitators and, and co-creators. Would you uh, echo that in terms of you know, how Absolutely. to use not only platform, but how to bring you know, workplace insight, workforce insight to the fore? What are your thoughts there? Absolutely. I was, I was just having a conversation about an hour ago and we were talking about the fact that Having IT, I'm just using IT and HR sitting at the ta same table and putting together a strategy for what employee experience is going to look like for 2021. There are many more people that should be at the table. But if you think 10 years ago, 15 years ago, maybe IT and HR weren't sitting at the same, same table speaking specifically about what the employee experience was going to be because now technology or physical space in an office where you don't have your own workspace and your own computer, your own desktop, like those are all going to affect how we create the new environment. So I 100% agree with you. I would say like you, IT, HR, employee experience teams, there's so many different people that can sit at the table, but the data can tell you where you need to be focusing. And as you said, it's going to evolve and every couple of months it's going to evolve. So this team needs to stay together and continue to evolve with it because what we decide now might need to change in three months or six months. But the only way how we know that is through understanding the data. Absolutely. Well, Patrick, again, thank you for sharing. Thank you for showing up in the way that you do and uh, you be well. Yeah. I'll talk to you soon. Yes. All right. Thanks. Always good to see you. Thanks. Take care.